The Simpsons is a show. It's got a lot of episodes. It's got a lot of good episodes. A lot of these classics are cited to fall between seasons 2 to 8, the unofficial golden era of the show's history. Some people believe the golden era to just be seasons 3 to 8, but we don't need to talk about them today. Season 2 deserves respect. I'd even say it's my personal favourite in the show's history. There's just such a rawness to season 2. Characters are still cooking. I mean, that pot hasn't quite reached a boil yet, but it's on a steady simmer. After re-watching the first 11 seasons of the show, I can safely say that season 2 is home to multiple of my favourite episodes. As apart from the more spotlighted episodes, such as Lisa's Substitute and Bargett and F, Season 2's episodes don't seem to get the same fanfare that episodes from Seasons 3 to 7, despite many being of comparable quality. One such gem I found myself completely captivated by, from start to finish, was this season's final episode, Blood Feud. First off, let me stress that I had no memory of this episode. I don't know if my DVD copy was busted, but, but I didn't see a thing. So without further delay, let's see what's so blood about this feud. The episode opens up with the unveiling of an emergency sign outside the power plant. However, Mr. Burn is an unexpected no-show. We then cut to an almost unsettling shot of Mr. Burns convulsing on the floor, attempting to make use of what strength he has left. After a quick check over by Dr. Hibbert, Mr. Burns is revealed to have the big sick and eat some sweet blood. Smithers is out of the question as his blood type is sadly not a match, but you know who is a match? Bort Thompson. Homer quickly sees the situation as an opportunity for the Simpsons to gain a rather large reward for a rather good deed. However, I'm not too sure how much the good deed part factors into the decision making, but let's just say it's a solid 50-50, so Homer doesn't seem like a complete dick. The following events play out exactly as you'd expect, with some solid humour mixed in with a final death speech from Burns, and the blood does its job and he's back on his feet and out for the world to see. We are then treated to the absolute beast that is Athletic Burns. Mr. Burns is of course grateful to the boy who saved him, and he begins penning a thank you letter, which to the Simpsons' dismay is nothing more than a simple thank you letter. This seems great by the way. I love that the family have gathered and even moved to a remote location of their house to open this letter. Like, like I always enjoy when the family get excited over little things together, it's just, it's just, it's just nice. Homer, who isn't best pleased by the lack of a reward, pens a furious note to Mr. Burns. But before he can send it, he is persuaded to sleep on it by Midge. However, Bort has other ideas and mails the letter while the family sleeps. We have now entered the mid-stakes whammy portion of the episode. There is a potentially career-ending letter in circulation. Homer must retrieve this letter or face whatever consequences may befall him should Mr. Burns read it. Also, Mr. Burns begins work on his memoirs, and believe me, we're getting back to this. Homer's quest to retrieve the letter after failing to flood a mailbox and outwit a postal worker takes him into Mr. Burns' office where we get a brilliant scene of Mr. Burns responding so positively at first to Homer's sudden arrival, and he reads the letter out loud, at first overjoyed by its positive beginning, and slowly becoming more and more and more venomously angered by each passing sentence. Odd Mr. Burns is so chuffed by the sarcastic opening of this letter. He says it made his day. This is so nice. I'm, I'm kind of sad the letter just doesn't end there, and this would have been such a nice ending to the episode. I mean, I mean, what are eight minutes anyway? Mr. Burns, understandably, though, isn't best pleased by the letter, and has Homer removed by a security guard character who frankly doesn't show up enough anymore. The episode has now entered the post-mid-stakes, here's some more stakes portion of the episode. Mr. Burns tells Smithers to have Homer Simpson beaten up, resulting in one of my favourite Smithers scenes, in which, you know, he, he's a good boy, he carries out the task, he does his job, but he repeatedly backpedals on the severity of the beating which Homer should receive. This results in possibly my favourite Smithers and Burns scene. You, you gotta understand, I just finished rewatching Simpsons series 3 to 9, so I, I felt I could predict the outcome of this scene, I thought I knew what to expect. However, I did not anticipate the absolute boy that is season 2's Mr. Burns. This is a Mr. Burns who will dismiss Smithers from duty and drink alone in his office. A Mr. Burns who will engage in some drinky pools with his employee. Not that I want this to turn into a character study for season 2's Mr. Burns, but... But, you know, I could do if you want. My main point here is that Season 2's Burns at times feels more real and relatable, with Season 3 and beyond feeling more like a clearly defined cartoon character. Smithers prompts a scolding for not going through with hiring a hitman, whereas Mr. Burns says that there is no need for an apology, and thanks Smithers for disobeying him, and recognises that he himself was out of line. The two embrace in a hearty handshake, and Mr. Burns calls Smithers his friend and the yin to his yang. And this comment is what I like to call, why this episode is an absolutely large deal. 
Burns, having recognised that maybe life-saving blood deserves a bigger award than graffiti paper, takes to the mall with the promise that he is going to buy The Simpsons a present. A fabulous, zip, zoop, zabulous present. The Simpsons, meanwhile, who, you know, just been at home expecting, I don't know, death, see Mr. Burns and Smithers arrive at the house of a very large box. Mr. Burns comes in, and while you thought this episode couldn't dish out any more good boy Burns, he hands Homer an advanced copy of Will There Ever Be a Rainbow? The greatest thing to ever exist, period. This scene shows very clearly that Mr. Burns has not one ounce of anger or resentment towards Homer or any of the Simpsons. There's no evil intent here. So what's the big twist? Mr. Burns' gift is shit. I adore this ending. I was so happy with how they handled this. An episode that has subjects such as death, hide beatings, and penning vicious character assassinating letters ends with Mr. Burns presenting a gift. Being delighted with said gift, leaving in the knowledge that he has presented the family with the literal best gift possible, and leaves happy at a job well done. The family just look at it with bland expressions, with Marge confusingly trying to figure out a moral or a lesson for this episode. But quite rightly, there is none. It's just a string of events that results in a conclusion that simply amounts to the characters being rewarded with an underwhelming gift. It's not a happy ending, it's not a sad ending. It is simply an ending. My favourite part of all of this, though, is it isn't even as if Mr. Burns cheated out on a quick gift. This cost him $32,000. This was a life-changing amount of money in regards to The Simpsons, and it was used to purchase this absolute blessing. So that's Blood Feud. Now, it may not be surprising for you to hear that my main reason for rating this episode highly is the approach taken with Mr. Burns' characterisation. Season 2 in general gives us a raw look at Mr. Burns. He, like many others in the cast, was still a work in progress at this point. Episodes such as Bargas Hit by a Car help to show Mr. Burns' cartoonish villainous side, whereas Blood Feud gives us a more vulnerable betrayal of the character. Characters such as Smithers also get some shining moments in this episode, as well as the episode having some banging jokes. I mean, hey, if your joke's good enough to be featured in the 138th episode Spectacular, then you best believe it's a pretty good joke. We are treated to a Bart and Mo prank phone call, which are always an absolute treat, and something I'm so glad the show stopped doing before running into the ground. We get Mr. Burns finishing his memoirs, and god, these inner monologues are a treat. I'd happily have an audiobook of Mr. Burns recounting his great life from purely a Burns bias perspective. What I will say against the episode, however, is that due to the focus this episode takes on Mr. Burns, the Simpsons side of the story can feel a little underdeveloped, I will admit probably isn't as strong as it could have been. I love a good Simpson family focus one, but I really do. But this is the Burns show, and I'm okay with that, you know? Yes. Yeah. Blood Feud does a great job in giving us a more sympathetic approach to Mr. Burns, but if you want to see the man go absolutely ham, I'd recommend Bart gets hit by a car. And if you want another episode of a less cartoony, more stern and grounded Burns, I'd recommend Brush With Greatness. And if you want the best of all three, a sympathetic Burns, a cartoonish villain Burns, and a more serious grounded Burns, then you get elements of all of these in Two Cars in Every Garage, Three Eyes on Every Goldfish. Yep, Season 2. All of those Season 2. Season 2 just loved themselves a Burns episode. To be honest, I consider him a high contender for main character than Marge in this season. To conclude, Blood Feud might not become your new favourite episode, or hell, you might not even like it but I think you will find it a good example of a Simpsons episode you could have only done in Season 2. If this was Season 4, Mr. Burns would have likely been betrayed more villainous. If it was Season 5, his more human moments would have been the focal point of the episode rather than a nice addition. And if it was Season 6, he'd be shot. I highly recommend that you check this episode out, and let me know your thoughts in the comments, and let me know of any other Simpsons episodes that no one seems to talk about that you thought were the bee's knees. Goodbye, and I'll see you at some point.